Well, you know, one, one thing real good about South Dakota is we come home to a very safe environment. A lot less chemicals, a lot less farming in western South Dakota, which actually gives the bees a chance to rejuvenate and get healthy again to go back to pollinate in California. Hmm. And so I uh, love coming home. Uh -huh. It's good for the bees and good area. So, so like a resort. Yeah. Kind of like a resort for bees, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So your loss of bees is not as, as great here. There's, it doesn't have the stress factor. Right, so. right. Not quite the stress factor if it rains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need the rain to, yeah. to eat. The drought has been very difficult for us since 2000, actually. We've struggled with going to North Dakota a lot. And I think we've had about four really decent years out of the last 13. Mm -hmm. So, and, and all the drought. So. Right. Then you have CCD on top of that. Typical problems. Life changes. Yeah, you're still making a living, though. Still making a living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like anything in agriculture, right? You, you just don't know. It's not. Right. It's not a for sure thing. It's not a for sure you've thing. You got nature to deal with, which yep. is you, you can't control that. Yep. You know, it's, someone always asks, you know, like about faith. Well, you, if you're a farmer or in agriculture, you've got a lot of faith because there's a lot of stuff you cannot control. Right. You live by the grace of what's around you. Yeah. It, it's got to rain and things got to grow and. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things you just got to put the things in place and it's got to go through its system. Something I just really came to understand a little bit was when I started researching for this is uh, um, the difference between uh, domesticated bees and, and wild bees. I mean, the, those are kind of two different things, aren't they, as far as... Well, they're, they're, they feel, they're kind of different. You know, you have bumblebees, wasps, hornets, which are a different species. Uh, honeybees... Uh, are technically wild. They're, they're only dead, domesticated because I provide a house for them. They're free to leave, come and go as they want. Uh, when we get into something like African bees, uh, they're still a honeybee, just a different subspecies of a uh, greater one. Mm -hmm. uh, our bees are all European in relation. They, they came from Europe or the Caucasus Mountains and uh, are gentler than, say, African bees. Right. And the big difference is African bees are tropical, where these are overwintering, they come from snowy country. Oh, okay. And so they rely on oak trees or shelter to protect them, where Africans live on the side of cliffs and bushes, mm -hmm. very aggressive. But we see a, a decline in our fertile bees, such as bumblebees and that, for the same reason, spraying and different farming cold habits. So there's a decline even on non-domesticated species, mm -hmm. which is a problem. You see it in butterflies and everything. So something's changing, whether it's farming practices, uh, chemicals, you know, let's not blame any one thing, right. but something's changing and the bees or insects as a whole are on the front line and they're seeing it. Uh -huh. They say butterflies too. Butterflies the pollinators, too. They're, they're uh, pollinators also. Yeah, and they're all seeing kind of a decline. Decline well. in their populations. Mm -hmm. and so it, it's interesting to watch because, you know, if it's affecting them at that level, when does it start affecting our level?